tell us about yourself. So joining me today is Sean Neff from Neff Headwear. Joining us for the first year you've been at Summit and you're doing a breakout session later. First of all, tell us about Neff Headwear and what you do. Yeah, so Neff was the first one, right? I started that back when I was a freshman in college and kind of created a cool lifestyle brand, uh, found kind of beanies as our starting point. There wasn't at the time any company really focusing on beanies. It was all, it was apparel, accessories, snowboards, what have you. So started that thing a while ago, um, you know, and built that into a pretty big business in like 50 countries. You know, we worked with from Snoop to Kevin Durant to Scarlett Johansson to Wiz, the list goes on, right? So it was kind of a youth culture brand. And I ended up selling that company seven or eight years ago, and now I've done a handful of other ones. So so tell me about the other ones. Just list some of those off. Yeah, so the next one that I – actually, I didn't start it, but I found it when it was really small, and it was running out of capital, and that's called Sunbum, the sunscreen. So – um, found that thing, ended up funding that company seven years ago. We had an amazing run. That brand exploded and we sold that to SC Johnson about a year and a half ago. And then I've got a company now called Beach House. So we incubate brands. So um, it's more of a beauty incubator. So we've got five companies there. One's Moon. I'm partners with Kendall Jenner. So she's my partner on Moon. Got a hair brand with Tracy Ellis Ross. We started... Millie Bobby Brown's beauty company called Florence. We sold that. Uh, tr travel brand with Shay Mitchell. So I'm just kind of a brand guy, always starting stuff and in, in kind of the consumer world. Awesome. So you're doing a breakout session actually later that people can attend here. What are you going to be talking about detail wise in those sessions? Yeah, it's it's more of a f yeah, just like a fireside chat thing, but. Um, it's more a little bit about the journey, but it's more about like authenticity and brands, right? I think in today's world, it's tough to be authentic and real, right? And and the consumer today can sniff through the fakeness, right? Whether you're paying someone or not, whether you know the brand's real and you have real intentions of doing good things or it's it's fake, right? So I'll be talking a lot about the authenticity piece and then working with talent because that's kind of been my gig right over the years is and kind of what I do now is find a massive talent create product around them and take it to market so talking about how to do that in the right or wrong way because I think most brands today are leveraging some form of talent mm -hmm. to kind of share the message and and tell their brand story so you know, I've been able to do that a handful of times, which is fun. So obviously a serial entrepreneur, what would you say to people listening to this or even people attending your fireside chat later was the biggest thing that you've learned as an entrepreneur that's kept you going and helped you to be so successful? Yeah, look, I, I mean, I always talk about three things, right? Like dream, believe and hustle. And, and for me, like looking back, right, on everything that you know, I've been able to, to accomplish, it's all started with kind of a dream, right? Like if you're an entrepreneur, you're dreaming up something that you think doesn't exist, right? So I think that's critical in the beginning, just have big dreams, big thoughts, and you know, try to create something that doesn't exist. And then the belief part's huge, right? Like, and belief is on different levels. Like my first part of believing was I knew nothing, I was young, and my naiveness, was what definitely brought me success because mm. I didn't know how to run or operate a business. I didn't know that showing up at a trade show booth next to Burton where they just spent $3 million and I spent $100 cutting down a haunted house wall with a U-Haul, like that that wasn't maybe a good look, but I was so young going, that's whack that they spent $3 million. bucks. I spent 80 and all the cool kids are hanging out in my booth. So that naiveness really drove, I think, a lot of my success. Um, and the last thing's hustle because like it ain't easy no matter what like I've never met anyone that has started something that's been successful where they were like that was a piece of cake mm -hmm. super fun so the hustle part I mean that's where you win right because you've got to just crush harder than the next 50 people I love it dream big believe in yourself and hustle right okay mm -hmm. so what's in the future for you you looking ahead you got some fun projects on the horizon yeah there's always yes we're working on a couple new beauty brands right now some big talent we're 
you know, nowadays I've, I've been playing a lot in kind of this crypto DeFi NFT space, mm. which has been fun in, involved in a couple startups there. I'm just kind of like ebbing and flowing. So I'm like non-operational anymore, which allows me to like play in a bunch of different areas and jump on a lot of cap tables and start stuff. So I, who knows? The future should just be have fun and do rad stuff with rad people. Okay, I want a little behind the scenes peek. So you're obviously a hustler. You work hard. You've got all your different companies and businesses that you're investing in. What do you do on your personal time to get that work-life balance? Yeah, that's always the challenge, right? But I've got three little kids and a wifey. So, um, you know, that's the good counterbalance, mm -hmm. right? Is finding time just to chill with them and hang out and do the normal fun family things. And then, uh, you know, I surf a lot in California and I randomly picked up golfing <laughs> like eight months ago. And How's that going? Weirdly hooked, okay, like okay. jumped in like four days after playing four times in a row and like joined the country club and I'm like tucking in my shirt. So it's kind of weird, but, uh, um, you're all in. I love you it. You know, it's fun. It's like, it's like a weird challenge. Golf is not easy. And it's like, I just like trying to be good at stuff. And that's why I like golf. Cause I'm not good. <laughs> well, you dreamed it. Now you're believing in yourself it, and now it. you're going to have to really put real. that hustle in on the golf course. The hustle is real. I'm not seeing it pay off yet, but we'll see what happens. Awesome. Sean, thanks for hanging out today. All right. Thanks.